Three Sony Mavica cameras. These were cameras that were produced in the late 1990s and uh, what was quite unique about these early digital cameras is that they all used one of these which was a uh, three and a half inch floppy disk. Um, Sony Mavica. The Mavica bit stands for Magnetic Video Camera. Um, the very first Mavica was introduced in 1981 and uh, Sony had the honour of claiming the very first digital still camera. However, it wasn't actually a true digital still camera. What it did, it, it shot a short video sequence at 570 by 490 pixels and would write 50 frames to a 2.5 inch Sony disc, which uh, Sony called a Mavipack. You then would then view the um, pictures on your TV screen. There was no actual um, connection to a computer or anything like that. So these were the first true PC, actually digital, still cameras. I'll have a look at each one in a little bit more detail, but just to run through. And the very first one, which I haven't got an example of, was the um, Sony MVC FD5. Uh, that was introduced in early 1997 um, throughout with early 1998. And uh, that had a fixed, fixed lens. The late next, next camera was the uh, FD7, which is this camera, a real brick of a camera. This was introduced in late 1997, um, ran to about early 1998. And this camera fe featured rather impressive 10 times optical zoom, actual proper genuine optical zoom, pretty much sort of like taken from the uh, sort of camcorder technology but uh, that was nothing else on the market at the time um, could offer you that level of actual uh, magnification I mean it's pretty much telephoto really um, as I say the F FD7 this camera was slightly superseded by the FD7-1 uh, which sort of came along sort of like around about late 97 early 98 which was basically the same camera except it actually introduced two times writing technology to the floppy disk which uh, slightly sped things up. The next camera that we were looking at a bit later on, um, FD73, also featured 10 times optical zoom, which was just basically a kind of a, a step forward. And then finally, we'll be looking at the FD83, which was sort of the big brother to the uh, FD73, and it's actually featured MPEG movie, which was quite a novel uh, feature in its day. So there's the three cameras I want to look at today. As I say, what makes them important is the fact they used a floppy disk. Um, now anyone that's watching this video is probably in their 30s and older instantly. Three and a half inch floppy disk, yeah, easily recognisable. Perhaps some of the people that are slightly younger, certainly people at school, thinking, Christ, what the hell is that? Well, you know, going back maybe sort of like to sort of 1997, 1998, in fact, probably right the way through, I would have thought up to sort of, you know, reasonably uh, recent times this was your only really real choice of cheap optical removable media um, flash cards were around flash cards were around in 1998 but they were quite expensive you were typically talking probably five pounds per megabyte for a flash card so you know a 10 megabyte flash card is, was going to set you back 50 quid and that was you know quite a bit of money back in those days but these Everybody, everybody had one. All PCs came with a floppy disk drive, um, which meant if you took one of these cameras, say to a wedding or to a barbecue, you just basically we took out a floppy disk, and then instantly you put it into your friend's computer, and there you had it. Your pictures were there, you know, instantly there. Also for business use, fantastic. Um, people in real estate, estate agents could go out on site, take a picture with one of these cameras, go back to the office take out the disk, whack it into their uh, office computer and within minutes they could have the details actually uh, being printed out and the property was on the market. The same with surveyors as well, surveyors you know, take one of these cameras around and you know they, they, were, they were a very chunky camera but they really were quite solid which also made them very popular uh, at schools and certainly colleges where you could afford to actually let the kids shoot away on one of these discs and uh, not worry too much about if these things got damaged. Um, the disc itself, 1.44 megabytes. Um, typically, 
with the um, compressed setting on these cameras you could get between 20 and possibly 30 pictures on a disc. Um, the later cameras, certainly this one and this one, um, featured an uncompressed setting whereupon basically you would um, <coughs> you could take one picture in uncompressed mode, that was one picture and then you'd have to change the disc so maybe that wasn't quite so great but anyway, like I say, we'll um, going to have a look at these cameras and we'll start off with uh, this little baby which is the uh, FD7 ok so here it is, the uh, Sony Mavica FD7 I mean, first thing you notice about this camera it's a real chunky camera, I mean it really is a brick of a camera um, but it's surprisingly, it's, you know, it's quite nice to actually handle um, we'll just power it up There we go. It's powered up. Um, yeah, it's it's not it's not as bad as you think actually. It's actually quite sort of feels quite nice into the actual in the hand there. As I say, um, there was two versions of this camera. This is the FD7, and then you had the FD71, which that had the later times two disc writing capability, which made it uh, quicker to store the images on the disc. This camera would typically store an image in around about sort of seven seconds from when you actually take the picture which is, that actually sounds quite bad but to be honest that wasn't that far behind uh, opt actual removable flash media at the beginning obviously flash media got a lot quicker as, as camera technology improved hence these cameras all basically had different times writing speed um, I say reasonably heavy, weighing at 600 grams, that's one and a third pounds um, so the main feature of the camera really is this, this rather good 10 times optical zoom. I don't know if I can demonstrate that if I actually hold that up there. We'll aim at that. And there we go. Yeah, it's going to have a job, have a job getting it focused actually in the shed, but it really does zoom in surprisingly well. I mean, 10 times, that's equivalent in 35mm talk of 40 to 400 um so, so it's, that, it's really a telephoto size. Um, the camera feature had a variable, a variable aperture f1.8 to f2.9 depending on the zoom. It did come with a built-in flash but on the early cameras um, the flash was non-metered which meant you had to be rather careful because although Sony said they actually recommended using the flash between 7 to 13 feet, if you used it anywhere closer uh, the actual image would, would have been burnt out. The later cameras had a control where you could actually meter the flash and you could manually turn the intensity down which uh, unfortunately this one didn't have. So pretty sort of standard features you get on a modern camera really. You had a, um, a two inch viewfinder screen. You didn't have any form of optical viewfinder which was a little bit of a design problem really because once you got this camera outside uh, in the bright in the bright sunshine, or even, although you can actually control the brightness on this actual viewfinder, unfortunately, uh, the viewfinder does become quite hard to see in bright sunshine. So that's you know a little bit. An optical viewfinder would have really sort of helped. Um, came with a lithium-ion 7.2 volt battery, which quite quite good actually because the battery actually used the same battery that came uh, in the camcorders and even today you can still go on the internet and quite easily buy yourself a new 7.2 volt battery um, quite a powerful battery I mean this one here that we're showing I don't know if you can make that out it's showing 122 minutes remaining it's not even fully charged um, typically you know, sorry I think on the front here they yeah, they, claim, they claimed an hour and a half. Um, okay, maybe a little bit optimistic, but uh, it's possible, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose an hour and a half with actual sort of shooting. Um, as I say, stores a floppy disk, which uh, just uh, opens that cover open up, goes in there. There we go. Um, 640 by 480 maximum resolution not 
not particularly good <laughs> not particularly good nowadays but what you have to consider is you know back in the day when this camera was being produced and sold um, you know most people would be running a computer that uh, was most likely to have a 14 inch or a 15 inch CRT monitor and that probably was the, um, the resolution they were actually running Windows so pretty much this would actually give you a full screen image on a uh, on a computer screen at the time so it's probably uh, not as bad as it sounds so if we just basically go through some of the features of the camera um, firstly on, on the actual on the menu screen here you have a EV plus and an EV minus which gives you a kind of a few stops increasement either way um, you've got a self timer which is quite evident and then you go into the menu system well this just basically allows you to uh, set the clock turn the, uh, the bleep off field frame OK, I'm not 100% sure what that is, I assume that's actually for maybe you want to do a widescreen, I'm not quite really sure. And then we have the quality setting, um, and it's just purely standard and fine. So on the later cameras, fine would actually use the whole disk just for, uh, just for one image. And uh, that's really about it, that's about all you get. It does have a, and all, all, of, the, all of the Mavicas have this, it has a built-in picture effect feature which... Uh, you know, well, it was, I suppose it helped sell the camera, but it was, this was nothing that you couldn't do, actually, in even a, even a basic photo editing suite on your PC. But if we go through, you know, it does this sort of thing called pastel, which you can just you just make that out there, and then negative art and sepia. Well, I suppose that was you know relatively quite useful, sort of quite a nice effect, and then just basically black and white and then back to colour, but as I say, you could have done all that anyway um, in your uh, PC. So, taking a photo, well, pretty much as you'd expect, pretty standard. We use that um, an auto camera again. Adjust your zoom, line it up. First, first about halfway down, that um, fixes the autofocus, and it's uh, fairly quick actually, not bad at all. And then we press the button, and there we go. Recording. Mm. Has that very familiar sound? Anyone that's used to the old three and a half inch drives on the com on their computer it sounds exactly the same. Feature I think I need to demonstrate on this camera. If every one of the uh, Mavicas had a phenomenal macro lens, you know, really, really good. Um, I don't think it's been surpassed yet by certainly by a um, compact digital camera. I'll sort of give you an example here. Take it off of that back to there. Here's the sort of floppy disk. They will actually focus all the way down to one centimeter. As you can see that still can focus in there. And on the auto. There we go. Now look how look how close that can get. Right down to that. So, you know, incredible autofocus, incredible macro mode, which made these cameras quite popular when eBay first took off because you could really get in close and take some really good detailed pictures. Well, there we go. That's the, uh, that's the FD7, total brick of a camera. Um, you want to buy one of these today? Well, they really are quite cheap, actually. I mean, you know, you go onto eBay, things like that. You can easily pick one of these up for probably less than £10, um, I would say probably more like six, seven pounds really. People don't particularly want them anymore. Um, the picture quality and the actual resolution isn't any good for sort of, you know, using much on your holidays, but as a collector's item, I, th I think they're, they're quite, quite fascinating. So there we go, that concludes part one. Um, in part two, I'll just quickly run through the uh, FD73 and the FD83 and just show the additional features that uh, the later cameras have. See you in part two.